Hello guys, Colin here. A multimeter can be your best friend in diagnosing guitar-related ailments, and while it may not be the most exciting purchase you'll ever make, if you're looking to get into the world of guitar maintenance, it's an essential tool that you just can't do without. Most multimeters will allow you to measure a range of electrical properties. Resistance, voltage, capacitance, current, and inductance are all featured here on my meter, and the two insulated probes allow us to do this with precision and safety. There are many different multimeters available at all different price points, but for your everyday guitar issues, even a very basic meter will give you all the tools to pinpoint your problem. So let's take a look at the simple bread and butter uses of a multimeter that are most useful to us guitarists. For all of these examples, the probes are connected black to common and red to the voltage resistance input. Continuity. Continuity tests ascertain if one point is electrically connected to another. Within the resistance setting of your multimeter, denoted by the Greek letter omega, which stands for ohms, the unit of electrical resistance, there will be a symbol that looks like sound waves. Turning your meter to the setting and touching the probes together will result in the multimeter making a beeping noise. Now we can probe two points on any object, and if those points are electrically connected, the multimeter will beep. Cables. This allows us to test things like instrument cables. When your rig suddenly goes silent, cables are the most likely cause of the problem, but it can be impossible to tell which cable has a fault from the outside. Probing the tips and the sleeves will let you know if there's a break in the cable. If it beeps, then the connection is good and the cable is fine. But if it doesn't beep, then there's a break in that cable and it needs to be either repaired or replaced. Continuity can test all sorts of cables, but just make sure to disconnect any power cables from the mains before you start probing them. Ground wiring. Grounding issues are remarkably common with electric guitars. If your guitar starts to hum really badly or cuts out altogether, then it's very likely you have a bad ground connection within the instrument. Using your multimeter in continuity mode is a fast way to pinpoint what isn't connected. Within your guitar, all metal parts like pot casings, switch housings, the bridge, strings, and the shielding within the cavity itself should all be electrically connected to the sleeve pin on the output jack. By holding one probe on the output jack and with the other probing each place in turn, you can work out what is connected and what isn't. Any problems here are likely going to be caused by bad solder joints or disconnected wires. Fuses. If you have everything plugged in and switched on, but you're still not getting power to your amplifier or effects, then the likely cause is a blown fuse. Fuses can be located on the rear panel of your amplifier and, depending on where you live, inside the mains plug head. Probing both ends of the fuse will let you know if it's good or if it's blown. Remember to only use a fuse that's rated for your device. If your device continues to repeatedly blow fuses, then that means the device has developed a fault which requires repair by a qualified technician. Simply sticking in a higher rated fuse doesn't solve the problem and only means the fault will go on unchecked and it will keep drawing more and more current from the supply until your device is damaged beyond repair or it sets fire to itself and everything round about it. Pickups. Perhaps you want to know the DC resistance of your pickups. A pickup's resistance is a shorthand way of estimating how much output a pickup will have. A low resistance reading will mean a quieter pickup, while a high resistance reading will mean a hot or high output pickup. Most pickups will fall somewhere between 5 kilo ohms and 20 kilo ohms, so we can use the 20k setting on the meter and this will allow us to measure resistances up to that value. Probing the hot signal and ground will allow us to read the resistance of the coil. For humbuckers with four conductor wiring, make sure both coils are connected so you're reading the whole pickup. Not only is this a great way to compare the output of pickups, but it can also show us a fault in the coil. An extremely high or infinity reading can mean that there's a break in the coil, while an extremely low reading can mean there's a short circuit somewhere within the pickup. Potentiometers. Resistance settings can help us identify which potentiometers are in our guitars. While the value is usually clearly printed on the metal casing, this can sometimes be obscured by solder or emitted entirely. Pot values are typically 250 kilo ohms for single coils and 500 kilo ohms for humbuckers, although 1 mega ohm pots can sometimes pop up in certain places. 
The 2000K setting on our multimeter will read resistances up to 2000 kiloohms. So probing the two outer tabs on our potentiometer will allow us to see which of those three values it is. DC voltage. By turning your meter to the section labelled V, which stands for volts, the unit of the electrical property voltage, and ensuring that DC is selected, signified here by the symbol of horizontal lines, we can now measure DC voltage. Batteries supply DC voltage to our effects pedals, active pickups, wireless packs, your mother's sexual aid and more. A fresh battery starts its life with its rated voltage, but as the battery discharges, the voltage decreases until it becomes so low that it can no longer drive the electronic device it once powered. Probing the positive and negative terminals of the battery will show us the voltage the battery is currently outputting, so we can tell if it's fresh or a little bit dead. The electrical components within our effects pedals will operate over a range of a few volts, but they will respond differently to different supply voltages. This is why some guitarists claim that their pedals sound better with a slightly flat battery. That drop in voltage drives the components in a slightly different fashion, producing a different sound from when the battery was fresh. Now that's only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what you can do with a multimeter, but those basic tests will allow you to troubleshoot the most common problems you're likely to encounter as a guitar player. And as you build your knowledge and experience, you'll be able to move on to much more complex measurement and diagnostics. And if you want to learn more about guitar maintenance, then I highly suggest you subscribe to this YouTube channel because I'll be doing more videos on the topic in the future. My Patreon's also there for exclusive secret stuff if you want to support me over there. And there's also other videos you've likely not seen. But anyway, that's all for just now. So if you want to keep it loud, I'll see you later. I wonder how many people made an anal probe joke. <laughs>